Today we're here with Father Dave. He's going to show us how he prepares for Mass. Hello everyone. Good. Well, like last time, I think you have some uh, questions, but maybe what I'll do is just ask questions as I'm doing things that yeah. way. Okay, so this is the what's called the Vestine Sacristy, where, where the priest and deacon get dressed. So, you'll notice that the garments are are here in, in, in the uh, closet here. So we start with a white garment. It's called an alb. It covers covers everything. It's interesting. You remember I said last time that we, um, our Catholic, our Roman Catholic tradition goes back to kind of the old Latin. Yeah. So so a lot of the words we use for the vestments have to do with Latin. So so the alb is the Latin word for white. So that's why it gets the name of alb. So mm -hmm. the white cloth is put on, and then. Um, just so you know, in the early church, anyone who was baptized would put on an alb when they got baptized. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been to a, ch a little children's baptism? Yeah. I don't know if you, yeah. you know how they cover the child with a nice big white cloth? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the tradition. Oh. That, that's like an alb. Oh. And, and so, so in the early church, anyone baptized could wear an alb. Now, technically, I mean, everyone coming to church even today could wear an alb, but I don't think most people want to do no. that. Right? Okay, okay. So, starts with an alb. Then... Um, there is the sign of being a priest. And that's called a stole. It's it, almost like a scarf. But... And guess what the Latin word stole means? Scarf. Scarf. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the we talked last time about the color, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the seasonal color. So let's pick for the seasonal color. We're in ordinary time events. right now. So it's so green. So uh, the stole is put on. Now, in the old days, again, the stole would have been um, a sign of uh, a rank. Like the Roman senators would wear stoles one way, and, and different ranks would wear different color stoles. Yeah. And so uh, in the church, when you began to have priests, bishops, and deacons, they had stoles that kind of showed the rank of the, of, of the clergy. Uh, deacon Francis will wear a stole like this to sign as a deacon. The priest wears a stole straight down like a scarf. Then, same color of the season, it's, it's an outer garment called a chasuble. You seen you wear this before? Yes, and so uh, it's again a Latin word meaning little house <laughs> because it's like, you know, this like. Yeah. And in the Roman times, it would just, this would have been um, an outer garment to, to keep you uh, from the weather. Uh, a lot of people would have outer garments. And so, and so what ended up happening was things that were worn. For different reasons, became uh, have special meaning when it became used at the mass. Mm -hmm. So, uh, an alb, the uh, the uh, stole, and the outer garment called the chasuble. So the priest now is dressed and ready to go. Nice. What about the altar servers? Altar servers uh, wear an alb. Oh, oh. And. And that's why it's a white garment. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it, because they're taking on a ministry as a baptized person. So, t so again, technically, only one who would be doing a ministry would wear an alb. But for practical reasons, lectors and community ministers and ushers generally don't want to do that. So, yeah. so, so it comes down to the priest wears an alb, the deacon wears an alb, and the altar service wears an alb. Okay, so would you like to go see all the vessels and things like that? Sure, sure. Okay, great. Now we're in the sacristy where all the vessels that are used, that are used for bands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're stored in the different cupboards here. Uh, so why don't we just go through uh, what a, sac a sacristan is, a person who gets everything ready for mass, what a sacristan would do. So they'd want to make sure that there's a chalice, a main chalice. Yeah. The Latin word, calyx, means cup. just means cup. So uh, it, there's a chalice. And then there is a rectangular white little cloth called a purificator. Like it sounds, it's to, so you can clean the chalice. Okay, mm -hmm. so the purificator. Then there is a square kind of cardboard covered by a cloth called a pall. Uh, this actually, and this is true, is so that you keep flies out and things like that. <laughs> so it's, it's just a, yeah. Yeah. so bugs don't get into that. Yeah. And we have wine sometimes, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. And then... Uh, to, on, on top of that will be what's called a corporal, a square cloth that's a larger cloth and it gets unfolded at the center of the altar so that, so that everything gets placed on the pall uh, and it's, it's, it, in the center of the altar, everything gets placed on the center of the altar. So, 
we need the chalice with all these cloths. Then, they need to make sure that there is a bowl for washing of hands and a cloth for the drying of hands, which is a towel. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, the sacristan would fill a small pitcher called a cruet with water so that the water could be poured over the hands uh, or a little water could be added to the wine. Yes. Then, the, then finally what would be prepared would be the bread and the wine. So uh, depending on how many people were at Mass, you, you, we usually have one big hole so people can all see it. And then as, oh, are those in packages? as many little hosts as needed. They're kept that way so that they can stay fresher that way. Oh, yeah. So we kind of we kind of guesstimate how many people will be at mass and, mm -hmm. and we receive communion and we have enough hosts for them. Um, and then the amount of wine, if there's going to be uh, uh, communion, can be under one or both forms. Generally, with children, of course, at children's masses we just have it under the one form because we're not going to be offering mm -hmm. the, the blessed the, the, the consecrated wine to the children. Mm -hmm. But at all the Sunday Masses, uh, there's the option for, uh, for people to receive from the cup. And so a certain amount of wine will be uh, brought up during the off offering of the gifts, and it will be put in a pitcher so that uh, it could be poured into the different cups. Oh. One other thing that you might be interested in, that we do have what are called pixes, P-Y-X. Uh, it's, a, it's a great Scrabble word, by the way, P-Y-X. Uh, <laughs> If someone has someone who's sick at home and needs to bring communion to them, they need a container that, that they can hold the sacred host in, right? So, so they place the uh, consecrated host in the, in the container here, and then they can take this to a homebound person or to a nursing home person, and then they, they can receive communion as mm -hmm. well. I like that. And I'm just really, this is really cool that how these were over here are just packages of small little wafers. Right. But then when they're best blessed, then they're, they become the body of Christ. That's really fascinating. Right. So, uh, so for, from our Catholic understanding of, of, of the sacrament, it's that Jesus took bread, blessed the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body. And then he took a cup of wine and said, this is my blood. So, and then and did that and say, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. So we are doing what Jesus asked us to do. And so the church has always believed that you have to have bread and wine. And then when you offer it, uh, as Jesus asked us to offer it, with someone who is with a community surrounding the altar and a leader of the community who is uh, connected to, to the apostles. So the priests are considered kind of like connected to the apostles. So when you have that priest and the community surround the altar and you offer it as Jesus asks us to do, then that bread and wine, it's bread and wine under this, under in terms of, you know, uh, the microscope, right? I mean, it, it, it stays bread and wine molecularly, but it becomes the body and blood of Christ. It no, it's no longer the... It, it's, it's, a, it, it's a sacrament. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's something happens in faith so that we now know that when we receive this particular bread and this particular cup of wine, we no longer treat it as bread and wine because we know that though it looks like bread and looks like wine, it is, it is Jesus who said he would be present to us. And we're trusting Jesus' words, basically. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. So we're, we're trusting Jesus. And so it looks like bread and looks like wine. It stays that way. But we know that this particular bread that's been consecrated, this particular wine that's been consecrated, is, is now becoming for us the body and blood of Jesus. So we receive it with all that reverence. Thank you, Father Dave. You're welcome. Father, can I ask a question? Yes. What is this covered plate right here? Yeah, so so you have a sink, regular sink, water. Yes. Yeah. Now that, that drain goes down into the sewer as normal water, right? Yes. But every church has a special sink called a sacrarium, a sacred sink. <laughs> yeah. And that has a drain, but that drain doesn't go down to the sewers. It goes down into the earth. And the water just seeps into the earth. And every church has to have it because when we are cleaning the vessels after Mass, because there's little particles of the hosts and there's yes. maybe a little, bit of, a little bit of water with wine left in the... And so when we're cleaning the vessels after Mass, we don't pour that down the regular sink. 
into the sewer, we always pour it into the special sink called the aquarium, so mm -hmm. that it's a way to honor that, so that we know that that's just going to kind of naturally then go back to the earth, and yes. so we know that it's not going to you know get or mingled anything. with anything yeah. else. So that's why we have every church has a special sink like that. That's really cool. Thank Good. you. You're welcome.